Hello and welcome to another sunny day in Singapore. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen my blog before, um, I'm a British guy living here in Singapore um, and trying to give my perspective on what life is here and some of the issues that people are talking about and just what it's like to live here as an expat. Now today's video, I'm going to be performing on my walk to work. So hopefully I won't fall over. And I'm going to be talking about the Singapore elections. Yes, it's election time, as if we didn't have enough going on with coronavirus, hence the mask and all the other problems. We now have an election to deal with as well. It's going to be taking place on the 10th of July, which is a public holiday here in Singapore. And it's compulsory for everyone over the age of 21 to go out and vote. Obviously, only Singaporeans, though. So what is going to happen? Well, everyone's going to go out and vote, and then this man will win. Sounds like a bit of a joke, but that's pretty much probably what it's going to be. This is Lee Sin Long, the current Prime Minister. He's head of PAP, which is the People's Action Party. They've been in charge in Singapore since 1959. They've been the only party that has ruled since the country gained independence in 1965. And it would be, a cr well, it would be unbelievable. Crazy probably isn't the word. Unbelievable maybe even isn't the word either. It would be the most tremendous shock ever if they weren't to win the election. But here in Singapore, it's not so much about who will win, it's more about how much they will win. So back in 2015, which was the last election here, they got 69.9% of the votes. Now, in any other country, that would be an absolutely huge landslide. But here, it's kind of pretty much expected. And if they fall below 60%, for example, that's seen as a pretty bad result. So probably the most important thing to look out for is not who wins, but what the margin of victory is. Now, they're contesting 93 seats this time. Uh, last time out, it was 89, and the People's Action Party won 83 of them. And how much power does this all mean? Well, it means they've got pretty much huge amounts of power. There's pros and cons to this approach. We've obviously got the opposition in the UK. Um, we have much different political system. There's much more open political system. But the argument for it is that things here get done. Parties aren't basing their priorities on a five-year election cycle. They actually get things done here because they have a legacy. They have a time to make a project for the future. They have a time to decide on what they're going to do in the future. So there's pros and cons for the argument. Now, why is it being held right now in the middle of the pandemic, you may be wondering? Well, they have a five-year term here, so they had to get an election squeezed in soon, and time was running out. They decided to end some of the restrictions, open things up, and allow an election to happen. And it's basically probably the best time for them. They need to try and get the election in before a possible second wave of coronavirus, before the economic problems really hit the country and cause big issues. Um, so right now, it's probably the best time for them to do it. And what should we be looking out for in this election? What are the things to watch? Well, first of all, it's people's reaction to how they've handled the coronavirus, what they think the government has done, what they think of the issue with migrant workers in dormitories. Also, economics. People will be judging, you know, can the government guide them through this kind of tricky economic time? Another interesting thing to watch is the new generations. It's long believed or long, a long held belief that this will be the last term for the Prime Minister. They think he's going to win this election and then he's going to step down within the next election cycle. So it's going to be a new generation of politicians. They're calling it 4G, the fourth generation of the People's Action Party. So it's going to be interesting to see how some of the younger politicians do because these, let's face it, are going to be the politicians of the future. There's also an interesting family feud as uh, a bit of subcontext to all of this. The Prime Minister, him and his brother, let's just say they don't get on. And his brother has gone and joined an opposition party, the PSP, who are a new party. They're contesting the most seats against the current leaders. So his brother has gone and fought against him. So that's a little bit of an interesting subplot. Um, additionally, there's a big amount of opposition as well. A lot of opposition MPs a lot of opposition MPs standing in seats. So it will be interesting to see if this has any effect on the votes or if this can possibly split the votes. Now, what is gonna happen? I said it at the start. 
it's going to be no surprise <laughs> the P, the People's Action Party are going to win. Whether or not they will get a huge amount of the vote, it's hard to say. I mean, during a um, pandemic, are people really going to rock the boat? They want consistency. They're going to want leadership that they're used to. It's a gamble going for somebody else. And during this time, they don't really want gambles. And if the PAP do win, what will they do? Well, they'll probably continue their strategies, which they always do. They don't really side to the left or to the right. They take quite a pragmatic approach. Um, they make policies based on what they think is best for the country at that time. Foreign policy wise, they generally play it pretty chilled. They don't go too far one way in support of uh, one country or one way in support of another. They like to tread the line a bit. They want to be seen as a bit neutral, almost a little bit like Switzerland. So to summarize, there's an election. Don't be surprised if the party that always wins, wins it, but do keep an eye on what might be the percentage of winning because that will be most interesting. Have a look how some of the younger politicians do and also the Prime Minister's deputy, he's the man that everyone expects is going to take over the reins. Let's see what public support is in place for him as well. Now if you have enjoyed this video please do give me a like, uh, drop a comment, let me know what you think of the election and also do subscribe because there's plenty of content on the way. I'll say goodbye now from the very sunny field, uh, sunny parkway even here in Singapore and I'll uh, continue my journey to work.